Hey guys. Oh, thanks. Um, welcome to the last screening of the festival. We made it. <laughs> um, can I just remind me one more time? Can you guys give it up one more time for the volunteers? They are amazing. They have worked so hard this weekend and we can't do this without them. And I love each and every one of them. So hug them as you're leaving as well. Uh, my name is Emily. I'm one of the executive directors of the festival. Thank you. Um, I am super passionate about this show that you're about to watch. Um, I lived in LA for a very long time and I worked with foster kids on a weekly basis and I am very passionate about them and underprivileged children and really giving them a chance in life and to have the successes that everyone else can have and this show so beautifully speaks to that and really lets you see what it's like for these kids that don't have anywhere to go and don't have families and how fortunate someone, so many of us are. I'm sure many of you have met my parents throughout this week and they love talking to you guys. And they are wonderful and I'm so fortunate. So it's so beautiful to see this new kind of family and we love partnering with ABC Family. They've been wonderful. So we're very excited to see the season three premiere. I'm like, we're in season four. No. Okay. Um, I am going to introduce Robin Ross, our moderator, just to give you a little information about the viewing. Yes. So you guys are extremely lucky. Uh, this episode has not aired. This is the season three premiere that is going to air uh, tomorrow, which is Monday, right? Yes. Monday, <laughs> um, eight, seven central. So no tweeting, no talking about what happens. Obviously, you know, there's going to be some Spoilery things you're gonna find out um, within the first few minutes. Um, I know So please just again no tweeting nothing um, and once we start the panel just reminder no videoing just watch because they're they're right here in front of you um, Thank you so much. I do just want to add the, the whole thing about no tweeting the reason that studios and networks let us Show things early is because our fans are so great at not doing it. So last one. Let's keep going. Thank you guys. Well, I'll, um, Emily did a great job of introducing this show. As she said, it's just so amazing. They do such important stories. They're award-winning. Um, so I'm personally super excited to be moderating this panel. Um, as we set up chairs, I guess I'll start introductions. Um, first, we have executive producer Peter Page. <laughs> We have stars Terry Polo and Sherry Sam. And I'm pretty sure you guys have figured out the special guest. Um, I don't know if you guys were at the script reading earlier. Super excited. We have Kerr Smith. Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here. You better cross those legs tight, ladies. We up high. Oh my god! Oh perfect, thank you. Oh look, I spilled pizza on me. I was eating pizza. And then I spilled I'm like, oh I spilled pizza on my white dress. Um before before we started get into it. Um, I'm just curious, what was it like watching it on the big screen and also hearing laughs maybe at places you, you don't normally hear laughs or people sort of sighing? Um, what was this experience like for you guys? I think the person that laughed the most is Peter. I, <laughs> it's like, ah! I think I'm hilarious. So I had a blast. And I, I think you all are brilliant and amazing. So I'm, it makes me deeply happy to be, to be able to shepherd this episode. Um, so I want to take things back a little bit. Uh, the show has had such an impact, not only on television, but really on people who are just excited to see their stories finally told. Um, so for you, Peter, talk about um, 
you know, if that was your intention or if, if this was just one of those stories that you personally wanted to tell? It, it all started, Bradley, um, Brad Awake, my producing partner and I, we, we, every year we sort of would get together and go, well, what, what do we want to pitch this year? What shows, what shows do we want to create? And it all starts in a, what are, what do we want to watch? What's not on television that we want to see? And we both love family dramas. At the time, Parenthood was the only family, family drama on the air. <laughs> Who doesn't love Parenthood? And... Um, and so we were like, well, well, what's the Blazing Elm version of a family drama? And we thought maybe we'd do a two dad story that, that maybe I would act in, but then we realized that was really being well handled on television at the time. There was The New Normal and Modern Family and Glee, and so there was a lot of that out there. And then we sort of realized, like, uh, you know, like a piano fell on us that, um, that uh, there were not any two mom stories. There, there had never in the history of television been a series centered around two moms um, heading up a family, and and it's such a big part of my world. I, I have, I mean, pretty much every lesbian couple I know has kids, or is raising kids, or is trying to have kids, or is planning to have kids, and and um, uh, and so it, it just kind of we were like, oh yeah, there it is. There's the show. And the next question that follows is, how did they create their family? And we just decided to cram it all in there: biological, <laughs> adopted, foster. I'm sure they'll genetically engineer one at some point. There'll be a robot child in season nine. So, um, it, and, and what, what happened very quickly is we realized too that, that and, and interestingly, the show was met with a lot of trepidation by people in the, in the system and, and uh, foster care advocates because so often in Hollywood, foster kids are treated as the bad seed. It's usually the storytelling device that's used. It's, oh, there's a, oh, there's a new kid and she killed our son, or there's a new kid and she's eating our heads, or whatever. Like, so um, they were really initially nervous, and, and I, I, um, so I was really happy and realized, we realized very quickly how important that was to put that out into the world. I mean, everyone has really fallen in love with Lena and Steph as a couple. I'm just you know, curious how the casting process was, because it, you know, the story really starts with the love between the two of them. Um, did you immediately sort of find them and see that, yeah, this is going to work? Well, we, we, uh, we cast Sherry first. And Sherry just came in, and I, I had met Sherry briefly. My best friend cast her in a pilot a, a, a couple years prior, and so we knew each other just a little bit. And but she came in and read for us, and that warmth, that 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 the Lena ness that you get off of her is absolutely intrinsic to who Sherry is as a human being. So she came in and read, and we were sort of like, well, there it is. And then Terry, we then we sat down with Terry, and we were like, holy shit, Terry Bolo wants to talk to us. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, I don't know why I used the God voice for that, but it was exciting. <laughs> Terry Polo wants to talk to you. <laughs> She'll be amazing. Um, and she came in, and we had a we had a lovely time with her. And then we had to we decided we needed to do a chemistry read. So we brought, we had uh, Sherry meet us there. And Terry got off the elevator, and she <laughs> walks towards Sherry, and she goes, "Well, shit, I could be a lesbian for you." <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> that is 100% a true story. <laughs> And, uh, and we sort of were like, oh yeah, I think, I think this is gonna work. And we knew, and they're, I mean, they, what's amazing about these two women is that they have actually fallen in love. Like they, it, it, they are, you're very, very different human beings, but I think the way that you complement each other is so extraordinary and the kindness you show each other and the support you show each other and it's just created this, this beautiful relationship that resonates both on and off screen. So we're very lucky to have them. For the, for the two of you, did you feel the same way? Like you sort of just knew that this was, this was meant to be? Can you start? I don't know, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty shy. I'm kind of a reserved person and, and Terry's um, not shy. Not <laughs> shy. <laughs> Terry is not shy. So I'm, I'm always, uh, you know, a little bit hesitant about, um, you know, new relationships, new things. And, and, um, but it just was, for me, it was like a slow burn. It was like, She's so freaking funny. And that to me is always like the way to my heart, like when you can make me laugh. She makes me laugh and then I just, all my, my guards just come down. And so we laugh morning till night. We, I always say like, I'm peeing all day long. I'm peeing, I'm always just like. Yeah, well that's for other reasons. I'm peeing all day long because of her. Um, she's, she is like, you know, literally before you see one of these scenes, it could be any of the scenes you choose pick tonight, right before action, she was probably mooning the crew. <laughs> Or she was in her bare feet sliding across the kitchen, um, you know, imitating an ape. And then it's action. And then she is present. She is there. 
She is um, the ultimate professional. She doesn't only know her lines, she knows your lines. She knows where to angle herself so that we don't have to do an extra extraneous setup. <laughs> she knows, you know, camera angle. She knows everything. She's the smartest actress I've ever worked with and the most supportive and the most beautiful and sensitive and crazy and insane and, oh, and one of the best mothers that I've ever known. And I'm, lucky, I'm really lucky because I just had kids and um, she's a huge role model for me. Because we were on set, we're, we're doing all these incredible crazy scenes and then we're in the makeup trailer and she's trying to figure out how do I get to my son's baseball game and how do I arrange childcare because I, it's just, it's really inspirational to see her, um, her triumphs and her struggles and I just learned so much from her. <laughs> I love you very much. Well said. Now, Terry, do you want to say nice things about Sherry? Yes. It is your turn now. Yeah, she's all right. This is like a wedding when you have to prepare your own vows. And one for the first person goes and it's in their Shakespeare. Yeah, and you're like, oh, I, uh. I love you, Sherry. I quick kick with you, turn. Do not question, simply abide. Sorry, that's <laughs> Sherry Terry speak. Um, I got in trouble one time for telling this story <laughs> from Sherry herself. <laughs> Let's tell it. That went that after I. It seems like a winning strategy. <laughs> hey, Terry, say something nice about Sherry. Oh well, Sherry hates Sherry. this one, but I have to work with her first thing tomorrow. Um, um, uh, it made me forget my story. No, uh, 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 after I had first walked in and said, "Well, let's be a lesbian for you," as you know, Grandma kept from cowboy. I don't know. Um, was that when I, when I first met Sherry, she was so <laughs> stunning. So stunning and so beautiful. And, it, and uh, you know, I, I will use humor sometimes to diffuse uh, uh, uncomfortableness or, or, or um, um, problems. And so I think that that was my way of dealing with my being a little uncomfortable with the fact that this woman was so stunning and so took my breath away and um, we had our chemistry read and immediately we were finishing finishing each other's sentences we were interrupting we were overlapping we were just it was just it just blended it was like sliding into silk sheets it was it was remarkable but in 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 the beginning of getting to know sherry i was i was very um it, it was all me honey it was all me it wasn't you it was my reaction to her was was i, I She's going to be hard to get to know because she is so beautiful and so stunning. And, and when someone is like that, I mean, when you see a stunning woman or a stunning man, you know, you, you're kind of taken aback. And, and my impression of her was such. And then when we started on the set, and all we do is laugh and, and cry and touch each other. She has her hand up my shirt all day long. <laughs> But it's not because she loves me, it's because she's always cold and I'm always hot. And so she's warming up her hands on me sometimes. Um, she, uh, she's taught me... This is true, I've seen this. <laughs> I really enjoy it. <laughs> Sherry has taught me about love. Sherry has... Um, at, I'm at, at 46, I have finally discovered what it is, um, what true love really is, this, this show. and. And with Sherry, is is it has nothing to do with gender or size or color. It is there's the pureness. I've never. I don't think I've ever been treated with such love and caring and giving and comfort and joy and uh, em empathy as Sherry has given me. And and so therefore, I've been loved. I feel as if for the first time in my life, I've been truly loved. And that and that's from a woman. And I think that that has opened my eyes to, um, to love, finally. Are you coming out right here? Because <laughs> that will be some big news. <laughs> no, I know. No. Um, for you, Care, um, they talked a little uh, about this yesterday on the, on the Dawson's Creek panel, the writers' room reunion. But you know, clearly, you and uh, your character was a part of a landmark, grand, uh, groundbreaking first male gay kiss on primetime, and now you're part of a show that's doing amazing, groundbreaking things as well. Um, what's it been like for you to be a part of something that's, you know, blazing a trail? Can I borrow that? Yes. Oh, you didn't get no mic. I, 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 I don't get no mic. Um, I, I just enjoy being a, a part of uh, trailblazing shows, I guess. <laughs> um, it's, been, it's, been, uh, it's been interesting. Yeah, watch it, Terry. Be careful. 
it's been interesting. And, and you know, when these guys asked me to, to come on the show, I just was like, you know, I just love being a, a part of something that's really special. And, and uh, it's, it is groundbreaking. I think what Peter and, and Bradley and Joanna have put together is, is really, it's a huge family. And, you know, the, the two stories that you just heard is a testament to that. Um, you know, we have these things, what you call a, a table read at the beginning of every episode. And uh, there's like 40, 50 people in the room. There's network execs in the room. I've never seen that before. I mean, it's just a very, very excellent uh, uh, working environment. And I'm just happy to be a part of it, really. And I think what you're doing with the gay storyline is really amazing. I mean, it brings back a lot of memories, obviously, for me. And, and to watch, you know, Hayden do that at such a young age, it's, uh, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah, I'm really proud of that and proud of them and really grateful for you, Kerr. I, I think you did something really difficult. You, you were brought onto the show, you know, as, as a giant obstacle and as, you know, one could argue as a villain. And, you know, that, although we, I, you know, told you from the very outset, we, none of us in the writer's room were interested in Robert being a villain. We were interested in him being a complication. And, um, and a man who, who, through a series of circumstances, just didn't, you know, just hadn't been there. A flawed human. Yeah, a flawed, well, everyone on the show is flawed yeah. humans. That's really, our, our philosophy is just sort of everyone, everyone is fallible and everyone is redeemable. And, uh, and so I just, I love what you've brought to Robert and I love what we've been able to explore with him in terms of, of how we uh, screw up and, and how we try to make up for that. I appreciate that. Um, spin off? Just so you know, uh, uh, Kerr brought t-shirts. Didn't you bring t-shirts to one of those oh, yeah, read yeah. Brought t-shirts to the read through that he wore and, and, and Val wore, uh, who plays Jill, and then he gave one to Maya. What did it say, Team Quinn or to something? Team Quinn. <laughs> Foster, I season two. <laughs> I wasn't sure I was gonna get, Kelly to, or to get uh, Maya to wear it, but she did. Um, <laughs> I know See, this is what I do with it. Um, well, speaking of your character, you know, it seems like at the end of last season, um, he's kind of accepted um, his role in Callie's life. Um, and <laughs> uh, talk about, you know, what we can expect for him and his relationship with Lena and Steph. Are they going to all sort of be a part of some larger happy family now that they've kind of come to an understanding? Well, they, they invite me to live at their house. <laughs> I pay for everything. Yeah, yeah. We need to live at your house. You've got the big yeah, house. That's very gender specific, and I don't like it. Ooh. Kerr, with your teasing. Um, you could probably answer the question better. No, I, no, I mean, you know, you know, Callie and Robert have a connection, an undeniable connection, and so there, there will always be a place for him in, in her life. And, you know, there are more obstacles to be overcome along the road, and that's all I'm going to say. Um, speaking of obstacles, Lena and Steph are both struggling, you know, with things. Um, you know, one has guilt from that, from the kiss. Um, Steph has, you know, not really over. Sorry, spoiler alert. She kissed someone. Um, you know, and Steph's having trouble handling the accident, so. By the way, you should see at the table reads, the aforementioned table reads, whenever we get to a Lena Monty scene, Terry does this. <laughs> And then she'll look at the sweet, at sweet Annika, who plays Monty, and she's just like. <laughs> Annika is so sweet. She's, she's the like, loveliest, I'm yeah. I'm so sorry. I sit there, my arms crossed, and I look over to the producers, and I'm like, really? <laughs> when, they, they, when we did the, that episode, and when we had the table read for when she kisses her, I was like. <sighs> I immediately like, looked at the producers, and I was like, what's happening? What was the question? Oh, what, um, you know, talk about some of the struggles that they're going to face as, as a couple this season. First of all, I want to hit head on. Um, every relationship has struggles, whether you're lesbian, gay, straight, queer, bisexual, transsexual, what have you. Everyone has troubles um, and obstacles in their relationship. We are not specifically targeting this particular representation of a lesbian relationship. We're not targeting lesbian relationships uh, uh, at all. It's simply, as we started in the pilot, we are showing everyday life and everyday family that exists in this world and everyday relationship that exists in this world. And yeah, absolutely, we are fricking and fracking. We are sliding, we are misfiring, as Sherry puts it. We are not connecting. And if you look at a relationship, 
things aren't solved in a single episode. Boy, we've gotten spoiled with television shows. One single episode, and they went to therapy, and boom, things are great the next episode. That's not the way life works. We're showing life, man. You know, sometimes you go to therapy for years. Sometimes you go to therapy for a, a year. Sometimes you go and you work things out. It's a, it's a constant thing. Just because you get married doesn't mean suddenly everything's great and there are no more struggles. Uh, suddenly you're in a relationship. Everything's great, no more struggles. Everyone struggles it, to whatever varying degree, and that's what we're going through this season. Tough stuff. <laughs> that's what we're doing. Enjoy it. Enjoy the ride. Learn the lessons. Watch them. Learn the lessons. Learn what they learn. Enjoy watching them grow, because if you're going to watch, you're going to watch five, six, seven seasons of characters that stay exactly the same. That's going to be kind of boring after a while. These guys have got to grow. They've got to mature. They've got to love better, deeper, harder, faster. Anybody else? That was pretty good. <laughs> that, she says that all actually though in a response to you know a lot of social media and Twitter people kind of get a little heated about you know oh Steph and Lee are arguing again <laughs> um, and you know we feel the pain because uh, Steph, uh, Steph um, Terry <laughs> they're intertwined for me um, was saying earlier you know that um, you know, some of the scenes where we fight, personally, we hate those scenes too. So um, we know where it comes from. It comes from love, and, and hopefully, you guys are invested in, in our characters. But, um, you know, stick around and, you know, love us through it all. Yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what we saw um, in the episode, just so everyone can kind of look ahead to the season. Um, Peter, we were talking about it right before the panel. Callie, poor Callie, screwing it up. Oh, our noble fuck up, Callie. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, God bless her. She just tries and tries and tries, cannot catch a break. Um, I love her so much, and, and I just think Maya's so extraordinary in the role, and, and so I, you know, I, I just root and root and root and root for her, and she'll find her way through it, you know, she always does, but yeah, we've set her up. I mean, the interesting thing now is without, with, now that Robert's signed the adoption papers, the, the, the show has to evolve. The show has to change. There's, there have to be different stories and different stakes. We can't just keep telling that same story over and over again. So that's been the really exciting thing about season three is, is, is how, where are we going to take uh, the, you know, that, that part of the show. So it's been, it's been really fun. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of Callie, I, I have to ask because everyone on Twitter asks every day. Um, obviously, Callie and Brandon, they, they, you know, they've gone their separate ways. They're each having their own you know, singular storylines. But um, I guess, what would you say to fans who just love those two so much? Um, you know, what we can expect for just even a friendship this season between them two? There, there is an episode in the middle of this season that is going to just blow Bradley Shipper's minds. That's all I'm going to say. Don't worry. There's Bradley good Shipper. stuff. No, Bradley Shippers. Yeah. Bradley Shippers. Um, minds. They're, 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 they have an undeniable connection, and we're all well aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about Jude and Connor um, as well. You know, now that they're, they're together, but, you know, sort of figuring out their way, and, and people are finding out whether or not they were ready to come out, it's out. Um, talk about some of the struggles they might face and, and how the family will be there for them. Well, I, you know, I think the interesting thing about that, that's never been done on television before is, is seeing two 13-year-olds navigate young love, and they both happen to be boys. Um, and, and so it's a really, um, it's a really compelling opportunity. Uh, it, it's, it's no different. It's no more salacious or sensational than any other young love story that we've all seen a billion, billion times since Shakespeare, since the Greeks. You know, it's just, it's just a really beautiful human story. I mean, gay adults start out as gay kids, and and have to choose a moment um, to you know choose a moment to find connection and risk connection and and the the vulnerability that comes with that and and you know now they've got to figure out how to be with each other and how to be with their families and friends and the community at school and so there's a lot for them to navigate this season. Um, speaking of Hayden, uh, he wanted me to ask um, about <laughs> Hayden sending questions now. I spoke We're all going to be working for him in a few years, yes. just so everyone's aware. I actually spoke to him the other day. Um, no, he he wanted me to ask about um, Terry's birthday on set. Um, I don't know if there was maybe like a birthday celebration that he said to talk about. Well, I mean, we sang happy birthday, <laughs> and we gave you cupcakes. I just wanted to say. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> 
Was this a setup? Did Hayden? I think this is, no, I think this is what he asked about. Me, yeah, he just said you guys. Well, no, I because know. I did an early morning talk show in Los Angeles called Mark in the Morning, and he brought in strippers for me. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Those are dancers. They're very <laughs> sexy dancers. Exotic. Very exotic. Um, and then when I went to the Fosters, we had a table read. And there was part of it that was thinking, oh, they're going to sing me happy birthday, rolling a cake. Whoa, oh, no, stop, stop. I got cupcakes. <laughs> Sherry had birthday cake, rolled it on the set. Happy birthday. Hayden, two years in a row. Happy birthday. Had about candles and cake and everybody. There were candles in your cupcakes. <laughs> Next year, you guys have to go all out. I, I got think. five cupcakes. I got five cupcakes. So I told Hayden in private. I was a little upset. By the way, I also stripped for you. <laughs> Let's, I thought that's where this story was going. I no, thought I was going to go back. I, I Your grinded were still for you. On. I, I, Terry said, well, I got strippers on the radio. So, and I was like, all right. He well, danced Jesus. for me. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. That's another panel. <laughs> <laughs> Um, before we go to audience questions, um, for each of you, you know, now that you're, you're really hitting your stride, uh, season three starts tomorrow. Um, what is everyone really most excited about and what story you're most excited to tell? The stripper story. Kerr? <laughs> you start, Kerr. Uh, I'm just excited to see where, the, you know, where we go with the Quins. And, you know, it, now that everything's uh, out of the way and I, I, I guess Robert dropped the whole, the whole case, um, you know, he gets to really be a dad to someone he didn't really didn't know existed. So I'm excited to see where that goes. Yeah, there's a big, there's a big bomb to drop in the, in the Quinn household, too, in episode two. Y yeah. There's, right? Yeah, there's a bomb. Yeah, there's a big bomb, a bomb coming, so just got bombs. look out for that one. Quinn dropped the bomb on me, baby. Come on, everybody. We can't afford the rights to that song, Terry. <laughs> um, well, I'm looking forward to seeing if uh, Steph and Lena can uh, just find their way together to communicate because obviously we know that when you don't communicate in a relationship you know third parties can enter the situation and stuff can happen so um you know and i was really i was really sorry 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 i was really um you know lena another one? lena no no <laughs> Lena. You've read the script, Terry. Terry. I, don't, I like, I like this notion that she's like, what is happening? Uh, she's there every table read. I only read my line, my line. Well, that's true. Blah, blah, blah. My uh, line. But, um, 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 what was I going to say now? You made me all flustered. Um, third parties enter uh, third parties. the picture. Third parties. Yeah, all of that. What third, um, what third parties can happen. Um, I don't know. Go. <laughs> I'm interested to see. Um, I love Maya's and Callie, Mal, Ma, Mally's. Wow, uh, Maya Callie's storyline. Um, I'm I, I'm loving the fact that she is becoming. Um, she's growing into a woman. She's kind of on the edge. Um, but she, you can see the frustration building, and you see it starting here, the frustration of not being in charge of her own life and seeing foster children when they get older. She's suffered through all of this stuff as a young foster child, and, it's, and, and now she's been given a chance to make things good for herself and her brother. And so she's seeing the older aspect of things and seeing her get involved in the foster system and seeing how broken it is and seeing how um, a lot of these children are, are left to their own devices after a certain age when they age out of the system. And it's, it's interesting to see her um, have something to really glom onto aside from just herself and what she's going through to have a real passion. That's taken from, because of the show, we, you know, all sorts of foster stories come to us now and we get to sit down with amazing, amazing kids. We got to do, go to D.C. with a bunch of kids to the, to, um, the White House with a bunch of kids who uh, were advocating for changes necessary in the foster system and we got to hear their stories firsthand and almost to a person, almost to a person, they wanted to become social workers or lawyers so that they could advocate for other kids like themselves. Yeah. Almost to a person. And I think that's just so true and human is, you know, we, we, we seek out, we try to claim that which we weren't able to claim in our childhoods. And, uh, and so that's, that's ground, very, very grounded, I think, in, in reality. And I think it's gonna be a really, really exciting thing to see, yeah, so. 
and I, I mean, I'm so, the, I'm so invested in all of them. I'm so, I get so excited when they get something right, and I get so frustrated when they screw it up, and I know that that's, you know, our fault in the writer's room. That's me and Brad and Joanna and, and the amazing team of writers we have who, who screw them up, but I, what I love is their humanity. I love that these characters will screw it up, will own it, will try to fix it, will move on um, when and if they can. And, um, and to me, it's just such a privilege to get to watch these actors inhabit these roles and, and see the things that we weren't expecting that, that come shining through and the humanity that they all bring to it. That makes me deeply, deeply proud. Um, so we're gonna open up to audience questions right here in the front. What's a stripper? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry. My favorite part about working on the Fosters, you wanted to know what my favorite part about working on the Fosters is. Um, I liken it to going from one home where I live with my son and my daughter to another home where I live with Sherry and Robert and Peter and Bradley and Maya and David and Sierra and Hayden and all the crew and all of the writers and producers and, and it's truly, you know, you hear a lot of Hollywood gossip and stuff like that, that is, I wish she hits her and she thinks she's the bitch and my, and um, it's truly, we, well you said something else that, <laughs> Has she ever heard that word before? <laughs> tell, yeah. um, it, but that's not true on our set. We 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 oh, genuinely care so much about each other. Okay, can I tell the story about your dog real quick? <laughs> it was an awful, awful, awful day in Kerr's life. Um, he, he had um, he had had a dog. We were on set, and um, he had had a dog that he loved very dearly, and it had passed. And unfortunately, he had to come to work that day, and he was absolutely destroyed, and he felt awful, and we all felt awful. Well, Demo here <laughs> had no idea, and she said, uh, uh, "I, I like Kerr. We've been working all day." And I said, "Kerr, what are you doing here?" So oh, he had no lines. He had to just pop in and go, "Hi." I go, "Oh, well, they brought you in on your day off. Is all you had to do." <laughs> And poor Kerr just stood there. And he just kind of walked away and is crying. And, and Maya's like, you're a dumbass. And I'm like, what, what happened? And, and, and someone came and told me that, that Kerr's dog had passed. And I was like, oh, yeah, right, trying to make me feel bad. They're like, no, dog's, his dog had really passed. I felt so unbelievably horrible. I couldn't even act. I couldn't even do the scene. And, and Maya came, Maya's like talking to me and crying with me. And then I'm going to Kerr and crying with him and saying, you know, my God, I'm so sorry. It's like, we all, you know, even though I hate Robert, I love Kerr. We all care so much about each other. And we, we, that's my favorite part is coming to a family that cares and loves and stands by each other and supports each other. And, and you can come with your troubles. You can come with your joys. And, and it's an incredible, an incredible cast and crew. Don't ever ask me any other questions because I'll take up the rest of the time. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Yeah. Um, so with her obviously on Dawson Creek, you were an adult when they sprung on you that Jack was going to be gay. At what point did you know Hayden was, sorry, Jude was going to be gay and did you have to pre it like his parents and, and like is there more stuff involved? That goes back to before he was cast. Yeah. Yeah, and everyone who everyone who came in to test for it was it was made very 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 clear where where we wanted to take the story and to make sure they were on board. Same with Connor, you know, we knew we knew all along that we that there, that some version of these stories were going to exist, and we needed to make sure people were on board with helping us tell them. So, and they have been extraordinary. Those boys are unbelievably kind and generous and thoughtful. They are old souls and good people, and so are their families. So we've been very very lucky. And they're very close too. They're, they're, they're best friends. They're like they're, they're best friends, which I think really shows on screen, you know? Who else? Uh, right there in the pink. Yeah, purple. Um, when you and Bradley created this idea, did y'all have like a 10 to 15 year plan to make sure you were <laughs> 15 years? <laughs> they're not the Simpsons. <laughs> Arda. <clears throat> uh, no, we didn't. We, writing a pilot is the hardest thing in the history of the world. And it, no, we just wanted to get through the first hour. 
Seriously, we knew we knew we were laying into place lots of interesting pieces to move around the chessboard. You know what I mean? We knew we were creating lots of relationships that were specific and had challenges inherent in them and were unique and, and were surprising new twists on relationships that we all understand. So we knew we had all that in place, but I really we really didn't know what episode two was gonna be. I, I have a, um, a sometimes changing vision for the last few moments of the series. <laughs> Robert's dead. Oh, spoiler! There's that voice again. I said it's sometimes changing, yeah. but not always. Robert's alive. <laughs> we have time for one more question, or maybe two if they're quickish. We'll do both of you guys. The, we've been, we were prepared for some backlash when the show went on the air, and there was a little teeny tiny bit, but I mean a teeny tiny bit, that didn't even really spark anything. We were all sort of like, I was a little disappointed, to be honest. I like, I like a little controversy I always have. And, uh, and so there wasn't any of that. The first time we hit any controversy was the John R. kiss. That was the first time there was a little bit of backlash, and I just, I, you know, I submit again, how old were you when you had your first kiss? That's all really the only response I have to that. I, I'm so sorry. Yep. Are you gonna say something, Sherry? You gotta, you gotta speak up. <laughs> Last question. I'm sorry. What I have a fan. <laughs> this is awesome. I think you have more than she'll, a fan. She'll, she'll be Security. the one person watching the quiz. Row two, number uh, one, 1708. Thank you. What seems to be out of character for Terry as a person? Should <laughs> I love that scene. I, Joanna I, Johnson wrote that episode, and yeah. that scene and is Annie one of my Potts. favorite scenes. Oh my god! I, you all are so brilliant in that, and Cherry turning off her necklace, and <laughs> I just that, that's gonna make it. it I, exactly. Christmas is over. You're ruining Christmas. <laughs> Lights out. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> But you and Annie are amazing, and our Brandon trying to eat that lasagna. I just, I <laughs> love that scene. Uh, holidays on ice, man. I just, I just think it's so amazing. Yeah, that's what I love so much about this cast is that they show up with that stuff. They'll share it with you. They'll share their mess with you, and that's what makes human beings interesting. You know, people, you know, why can't they just be happy and why can't they just be nice to each other all the time? And it's like, well, that's really boring. And, and not true, none of us are capable of that, you know? None of us, so, um, and if you are, you end up on top of a, you know, a bell tower with a rifle. So it, it's, it's, people who pretend to be nice all the time, they, they go crazy. Nice. They're that's, not nice all the time. That's what I'm saying, they pretend to be nice and then they go crazy. They pretend, oh, I'm not gonna. Why, why do you not listen to me? So I'm the I'm boss, you know you. that, right? I'm the boss, you listen to me. Doesn't happen. Anyway, no. <laughs> it was, you know, Annie Potts is amazing, and she, I just, I like to tell behind the stories, 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 stories. Um, Annie had, uh, never mind. Anyway, it was great. It was, it was, um, um, uh, yeah. It's Annie Potts, it's the same it's a, it's story. It's the same story. I mean, it's, it, it we is. don't have to go into too much detail, but she also had suffered one of the most devastating yeah, losses that day. That morning, she yeah. was maybe 25 minutes late to work, and she showed up, and she, rock that whole episode just and like, it was totally amazing that you know because it it, it 
completely, I think, in a way, informed the scene for her that, you know, just the letting go of the emotion and just getting mad and letting go. And, 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 and it's wonderful as an actor to be able to use that kind of stuff. That's all, well, we don't really have a choice. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you try to just shut it out, I feel like whatever's going on in your life, I feel like you got to let it come in somehow. You try to shut it out and your work gets really shallow. Well, I think we've all had Christmases or family gatherings like that. It's just, you know, we're <laughs> it just happens. And that's, that's the beauty of, of our show is that we try and recreate that to the best of our ability. Well, I want to thank um, all of you guys for being here um, and to the audience and the fans for being here as well. <laughs> Wrapping thank you up guys ATX so much. for the last panel. And no giving Please. away what happens. Yes. You got a crying game, that shit. <laughs> all right? I've taken down all of your numbers. <laughs> but still tune in faces. tomorrow. Tomorrow night, 8, 8 o'clock. ABC Family. Thank you. <laughs>